Hi, this is Julie Harland, and I'm your math gal. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where you could search for any of my videos organized by topic. In this video, we use a crisscross method to factor the following three problems. I'm going to show you a way to factor quadratic trinomials. That means a quadratic, it has like an x squared term. And there are three terms, which means a trinomial. Try to figure out how we could factor this using what I'm going to call a crisscross method. Now, there are many ways of factoring this. This is just one possibility. In the traditional trial factors, what you do is you put some parentheses here and Whatever goes in these spots has to multiply out to be 4x squared, so you could try 4x and x, or 2x and 2x, for instance. And then here and here, this has to be, multiply out to be negative 6, which means one's got to be positive and one's got to be negative. So you might try plus 1 and minus 6, for instance. As it turns out, since the original quadratic does not, have, does not have a common factor in it, then in your parentheses when you factor, there shouldn't be a common factor. So it's, this is going to be impossible. And even if you switched and put the 6 here and the 1 over there. Or if you put a 3 and a 2 instead, so let's say you had the 2x and 2x, and you tried 3 and 2. This isn't going to work either, whether I put a plus or minus sign because of this common factor of 2. Anyway, you would try a bunch of factors. So hopefully, let's see, it won't take me too long to get it. I could try 4x and x, and then I've got to find factors of 6. So I can't put a 6 and a 1 here because there would be a 6 in the same parentheses as a 4. That won't work. I could try 1 and 6, or I could try 2 and 3. Of course, I can't put a 2 in here with a 4. So I'm going to try 3 and 2, for instance. And then I have to decide where the plus and minus goes. And so I might try this, and it doesn't work because when you do the outer and inner terms, the outer term is a negative 8x, and the inner term is a plus 3x, and that gives you minus 5x, and the middle term is plus 5x. So if you switch the plus and minus sign here and make this, sorry, I don't know what happened there, got an extra little line there, this actually will give you the correct factorization. So this is the trial factors method. You just try different combinations, and then, of course, you want to do the FOIL method or some other method for multiplying this back to make sure you get 4x squared plus 5x minus 6. And in this particular problem that I just did, this is the answer. All right, so that's just a little quick review of trial factors. Now we're going to do the problem using what I call the crisscross method instead. All right, we're going to start out with 4x squared plus 5x minus 6, and here's the method. We're going to take the first coefficient and then the constant term here, so the 4 and the 6. And I'm going to write, and actually it's not 6, it's negative 6. And we start off writing two factors that multiply out to be 4. So I could choose 2 and 2, or I could try, try 4 and 1. I'm going to start off with 2 and 2. Just write them vertically. Now next to that is the negative 6. I want to write down factors of negative 6. But you have to be careful that if I put down a factor of 6, it can't have a common factor with this number over to the left. So for instance, if I thought of 6 and 1, that is not going to work because 2 and 6 have a common factor. So I'm not going to do anything where I would have a common factor going across. And six and uh, 1 and 6 isn't going to work either. So how about 2 and 3? Hmm, that won't work either because I can't put a 2 in either of these places. So you know what? 2 and 2 did not work, so I'm not going to use 2 and 2. Let's try something else. Other factors for 4 are 4 and 1. Okay, so that multiplies out to be 4. And for negative 6, well, I could try 6 and 1. Now, I can't put the 6 next to the 4 because, again, I'd have a common factor, but I could put 1 and 6. Now, there's a detail here. It has to be multiply out to be negative 6, so I have to put the minus sign in front of one of these numbers. So just pick one of them to put it in front of. Now we're going to do the crisscross. You're going to multiply those together and add it to whatever these multiplied to get together. So 4 times 6 is 24, 
and then 1 times negative 1 is negative 1, and 24 minus 1 is 23, and what you're trying to get is this middle term. Those represent the outer and the inner if you did the FOIL method. So that didn't work. Now, if it came out to be negative 5, all we would have to do is switch the plus and minus sign, by the way, but 23 isn't the opposite of 5 either. So this didn't work doing 4M1 with the 1 and the 6. So let's try 4M1 with other factors of 6. How about 2 and 3? Well, I can't put the 2 here, so I'm going to put the 3 instead. And now, since it really has to be negative 6, I need to put the minus sign in front of one of the numbers I'm not sure. Let's say I put it here. Okay, so again, we do the crisscross. We multiply those together, which is a negative 8, right? And then we multiply those together, which is a plus 3, and I add them together, and I get negative 5. Oh, that's close. I want positive 5 instead of negative 5. And since they're opposite signs, all I have to do is switch and put the minus sign here and the plus there, and then see if that works. 4 times positive 2 is plus 8. That'll be a minus 3, and my answer will be plus 5. So what this means is, what you see here is the right combination. See how it has the 4 next to the negative 3? The factors are going to be now written as 4x minus 3 times 1x, which we'll just write as x plus 2. And of course, you want to verify that by multiplying 4x minus 3 times x plus 2 to make sure it does equal 4x squared plus 5x minus 6, and it does. All right, so let's try another problem. So we've got 6x squared minus 13x plus 6, All right? So again, you look at the first and last numbers. So we've got 6, and then we also have 6. Both of these are positive this time. So for 6, we can try 6 and 1 again. Now, for 6 over here, well, I know my middle term has to be negative, so when you've got a plus at the end, just keep in mind you've got to have the same sign. So to end up getting a negative 13, let's make them both negative. So when we write the factors of 6, we're going to have to plug in a negative in front of both of them, okay? So for 6, for the other factors of 6, I can't put the 6 and 1, you know, I can't put the 6 next to the 6, but I could try 1 and 6, how about that? And we want the same sign, both negative. So let's crisscross it. 6 times negative 6 is negative 36, and 1 times negative 1 is minus 1. That's negative 37, but I want to get negative 13. So that didn't work, all right? All right, so let's try it again. Let's keep the 6 and 1 again. And we can't just switch and put the 6 up here, so let's try different factors of 6. How about 2 and 3? Can you put a 2 or a 3 next to the 6? No. So 2 and 3 is not going to work in either place. So you know what? That means this first term, 6 and 1 isn't going to work at all. So let's try 2 and 3 here. All right? Same thing. I need to have a positive here. It's going to be the same sign. So I know they're going to both be negative. And again, I can't use a 6 and 1 because I can't put a 6 either place here. So I could put 2 times 3, and 2 can't go there, so see how it'll, it gets down to this is the only possibility? And now we're just going to check and make sure that really works. So we've got 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, and 3 times negative 3 is negative 9, and we got negative 13, which is exactly what we wanted. So my factors, you can see going across here, okay, once you put in the x and put parentheses around. So what we would say is this factors to 2x minus 3 and 3x minus 2. So when you're doing this crisscross method, you can kind of eliminate some possibilities very quickly because of this no common factor thing. What's key is in your original problem that there are no common factors. So if there is a common factor to begin with, you want to take that common factor out first. So you're the trinomial you're factoring does not have any common factors. Let's do one more. 
All right, we've got 6x squared minus 19x minus 7. So again, we've got 6 and, we're, and the negative 7. And remember what we're trying to get when we do the crisscross, we're trying to get the negative 19. All right, so factors of 6. Well, we could try 6 and 1 or, or we could try 2 and 3. I'm not really sure, so let's just try 6 and 1. It's up to you which one you want to try first. And for negative 7, we could either try 1 and 7 or 7 and 1. And I could put the 7 either place, so how about I put it here? 7 and 1. And we want a negative 7, so one of these has to be negative. So let's just put the negative there and try it. So we crisscross, that's 6. Crisscross that, we get negative 7. That gives a middle term of negative 1. That does not check, all right, because we need it to be a negative 19. All right, so let's see if we switched and where the 7 was. We could try it again. So we've got 6 and 1. We'll keep the 6 and 1 the same, but we'll put the 1 up here and the 7 here. And again, you could put the negative in either place to try it out. All right, so again, we're going to do crisscross. That's 42, and that's minus 1, and that's 41. That didn't work either. So that's still not the right combination. Let's try something else. That's the only possibility with 6 and 1, so we'll have to try 2 and 3 now. All right, what about 7? Well, we could just put 7 in one place and 1 in the other place. So let's just put 7 and 1, and we've got to put a minus in front of one of the numbers. Let's try it here. So we are going to crisscross. That's going to be 2, and that'll be negative 21, and that gives me negative 19, and I wanted negative 19. So this is the winning combination here. If, by the way, I had put the negative in front of the 1, you would have got positive 19, and then you would have just switched the signs here. But we got negative 19 the first time, so that means our answer here We'll just be, we're going to put the 2x minus 7 and 3x plus 1. And there we've got it. So this is the winning combination. Usually when you do this little cross crisscross method, you could eliminate some things really quick. It's easy to see the common factors when you have that problem as in the first couple problems we tried. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where you can view all of my videos which are organized by topic.